The valley of the Mahanadi in Orissa, like many river valleys in India, has been the scene of dramas inspired by the waters of the great river. In fact, the people living in this valley learn to fear the river's changing moods. There were times when the valley was dry, when man and beast had to search for water. Then there were times when water became the grave of man. Flood and famine, this was the cycle of life it seemed. And the people of the valley, with courage and fortitude, came to accept this suffering as if it were all-powerful fate moving in mysterious ways. Men, women and children, uprooted from their farms and lands, were forever finding new earth on which to live. The valley was their ancient home. Where else could they go? Then, after centuries, man used his mind and talent to devise ways and means to harness the mighty river. Plans were blueprinted and the Mahanadi Valley Development Project came into being, a project that would bend the river to the will of those who lived on its banks. The first phase, Hirakud, the conception was massive. Storage capacity, 675 million acre feet of water. Power generation, 200,000 kilowatts. Canals stretching 660 miles to irrigate 2 million acres. Thus began the construction of the world's longest dam. the vast amount of material needed at the site, a special railway line was laid. Meanwhile, survey, material testing and soil research continued as a vital preliminary to the actual construction of the dam. At the dam site, eight miles from Sambalpur, the face of the valley began to change. And so did the face of a once tired and exhausted people. Gone was the pallor and apathy of the past. Gone too was the feeling of defeat and despair. Their frail bodies found a new dynamic energy. By now, the workers' colony too had grown. Apart from the flourishing market, there was a school for children and also a new hospital. Work continued simultaneously on several fronts. But hands alone could not build Hirakud. Machines reinforced the effort of man. Machines and men. In unison, they prepared the foundations of Hirakud, which alone could tame the Mahanadi and make her a source of lasting prosperity. The dikes are an important feature of the dam. They assure the maximum storage of water. Slowly but surely, the outlines of the project take shape. Engineers review the progress of construction. They tackle the specific problems arising from this complex undertaking. The decisions taken here are embodied in the master plan, which guides work on all sectors of the project. Bulldozers and machines that do the work of hundreds of men help speed the building of the earthen section on either side of the main dam, 13 miles of it. Over 700 million cubic feet of earth are being removed from the neighboring borrow pits. Enough earth to build a 10-foot highway from Cape Comorin to India's capital. These earthen sections are the arms, as it were, of the body of the project, the main dam. 
where batteries of machines are crushing stones, mixing cement, preparing in fact the muscle for the curbing of the Mahanadi. Here too, the modern machine unites with the peasant's basket to feed cement to the heart of Hirakud. On the spillways, concreting has begun after months of hard labor. They will guard the body of the dam. These are outlets for the excess water which may threaten the dam. At the same time, the structure which will house the power plant is taking form. For the engineers, there is a sense of fulfillment in seeing the growth of the colossus planned by them. They carry on the tradition of our forefathers who pioneered work on the harnessing of rivers. And for the people of the countryside, there is satisfaction also. Hirakud is the site of a modern miracle, which they themselves have performed. At various stages of construction, Prime Minister Nehru visits the project to see for himself the progress of work. He has described these structures as the temples of 20th century India. And indeed, Hirakud is as vital an achievement as the Sun Temple of Konarak in Orissa. The years pass. Work at the dam site continues without respite. The outlines of this multi-purpose project are visible evidence of the success of planning and execution which has from its inception been entirely in the hands of Indians. It is a giant monument to the faith and labor of tens of thousands. They have sacrificed much to make all this possible, even their lands which will be submerged by the reservoir of the dam, a lake covering 288 square miles. But they know that operations have been launched to reclaim new land for them, land which Hirakud will guard and succor. Already many have been settled in new villages. The old patterns of life are returning. The opening of the Burgar Canal marks a great day in the valley. Those uprooted from the site of the dam will now be able to re-establish themselves on new farms along the life-giving canals. Inspired by the first achievements, the builders of Hirakud, often themselves the children of the valley, begin the final phase of construction. They toil by day, they toil by night, in a fervor of activity, for Hirakud means a new life for them and for future generations. January 1957. Hirakud is complete. Nine eventful years crowded with the drama of a monumental achievement. Mahanadi, the great river, is at last controlled by a dam that is 16 miles long. A man-made mountain of earth, stone and concrete, storing the water drained from an area of over 32,000 square miles. This water will not ravage the valley. Instead, it will turn the turbines of the power plant creating electric energy which can be sent hundreds of miles to towns and villages, houses and factories. Nothing is more eloquent than this panel of instruments which controls and transmits energy. Hirakud, drawing its power from the Mahanadi, now offers that power for the further transformation of Orissa. from Hirakud creates new industry, new employment, new wealth. It is proof, if proof were needed, 
that the tragic times will never return. Hirakud has given birth to new townships, complete with technical colleges which train engineers for the future development of Orissa. It has given the valley new canals, the first of a vast irrigation system which will be organized to sustain and develop Orissa's agriculture. They are the veins which will nourish the valley and her people. Along the Mahanadi, they speak of Hirakud with pride. It is a story that generations yet unborn will treasure, for it tells of man triumphant, master of his fate. If these are the fruits of Hirakud, then surely when the Mahanadi has been dammed at Tikarpara and Naraj, when even more canals bring life to millions of neglected acres, the earth of Orissa will yield her bounty as never before. That is the prayer of the people of the valley.